Hi there, my name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And this is the Van Lair Building. Fourth floor. And the last lecture in this series on the fundamentals of EC design, we talked about how analog information can be represented as voltages or currents for inputs and outputs of various electrical systems. So I thought we should look at some integrated circuits that use various combinations of voltages and currents for their inputs and outputs. Here we have the classic TL074 quad op amp. Practically speaking, these are interchangeable with TL084s. Operational amplifiers are the most well-known of the circuits I'll show you in this video. They have differential voltage inputs and voltage outputs and have a ton of gain. So you need to use them with negative feedback to have any hope of having them operate in anything like a linear fashion. Although you can use them with positive feedback to create oscillators and comparators. There's also dual and single versions in the form of the TL072 and the TL071, and equivalently the TL082 and the TL081. The TL07X and TL08X series are excellent workhorse amplifiers. Their JFET inputs give them high input impedances, and you'll see them all over the place in analog music synthesizers. If you need higher fidelity audio, you can go with the 5532, which is a dual op amp, or the 5534, which is confusingly not a quad op amp. The 5534 is a single op amp, although it has very low distortion characteristics. The 553 series doesn't have the crazy high input impedance of the TL07 and TL08 series, since the 5532 and 5534 have bipolar junction transistors at their inputs instead of junction field effect transistors. Also, the 553 series is a bit power hungry and can tend to run a little hot. There are super duper low noise amplifiers like the AD797, but they're pretty expensive, so you only want to use those if you really need to. So far, we've been talking about the well-known differential voltage input, voltage output op amps that everyone knows and loves, but there are variations on this theme called Norton amplifiers. Norton amplifiers maintain the voltage output of regular op amps, but instead of a differential voltage input, they have a differential current input. Like regular op amps, these are designed to have a massive amount of gain, although instead of a unitless gain like in the case of a regular op amp, the gain is now in units of trans resistance. And when used with negative feedback, the output will try to produce whatever voltage and current is needed to maintain equal currents at the input, just the same way that a regular op amp will try to produce whatever voltages and currents at the output that are needed to keep the voltage inputs equal. The LM3900 Norton amp was particularly loved by synthesizer designer Serge Cherepnin. And if you're interested in the Serge designs, I would recommend looking at the recent Cat Girl synth work by Ken Stone. And surprisingly, the sound effects in the arcade game Space Invaders are analog circuits featuring the LM3900. You can also get wide bandwidth amplifiers like the AD8001 for video applications, but you really only want to go for that kind of bandwidth if you really need it. They can be very picky about PCB layout. So be careful if you try replacing an op amp with something that looks on paper like a better op amp. This can often lead to all kinds of stability issues and parasitic oscillations, which you may not be able to hear per se, but they'll make things sound cruddy because they'll eat up your dynamic range and you will see them on the scope. So we've talked about op amps that have differential voltage inputs and voltage outputs and Norton amplifiers that have differential current inputs but voltage outputs. Now let's flip around the idea of a Norton amplifier and instead of having current inputs and voltage outputs, we'll have differential voltage inputs like on a regular op amp but the output will be a current. Such contraptions are called operational transconductance amplifiers, or OTAs. And I just discovered that if you look at the OTA webpage on Wikipedia, and you scroll to the bottom, one of the references here called 
comparison of operational transconductance amplifiers is actually a report that a couple of my students from a much earlier version of my Analog Circuits for Music Synthesis class called Theory and Design of Music Synthesizers put together, I guess, comparing different OTAs. It's been a long time. I forgot about this altogether. So this will be fun to go back and take a look at and see what sort of measurements they made. Huh. Okay, that's all kinds of fun. Now, a major difference between regular op amps and the Norton op amps we looked at earlier in this lecture and OTAs is that OTAs don't have oodles and oodles and oodles of gain requiring you to use negative feedback to linearize them. So they're usually used in more of an open loop mode than a closed loop mode. And the main trick that they have up their sleeve is that they actually have a third input. In addition to the two differential voltage inputs, there's a third input that's actually a current input that controls the gain. Now, the differential inputs can swing positive and negative, but the current input can only go one direction. So it's not a full four quadrant multiplier, it's a two quadrant multiplier. Much of my analog circuits for music synthesis class is a meditation on the OTA. The LM13700 is particularly popular among people who currently design analog synthesizers, offering two OTAs and two buffers in one package. To round out the set of inputs and outputs of voltages and currents that we're looking at, let's take a look at the SSI2164. This is a revised version of an analog devices chip, the SSM2164. And this one actually has current audio in and current audio out. But the control mechanism here that controls the gain is actually provided by a voltage. I have another video where I explore this chip and a similar class of chips by the oddly named That Corporation, as well as a few other interesting chips. Now, if you're a computer engineering student, you may be thinking to yourself, hey, I'm not an electrical engineering student, I'm a computer engineering student, so I don't need all of this analog stuff. All I need are ones and zeros. Well, if you have a microcontroller and it has analog to digital inputs and digital to analog outputs, it's rarely the case that you can just slap your sensor directly onto those input pins and slap your actuator directly onto the output pins. You'll usually need some kind of signal conditioning. You may need to do some analog filtering. You may need to scale signals and shift levels and move between current and voltage representations of signals.